Hey guys, James coming from Carts and Farts. Got a little project, one of my uh, Eco Battery customers. You may recognize that cart on one we did a while back, but uh, he wanted some rim lights. So I ended up picking these up from Crocker's Creations in South Carolina. And um, so we're gonna install them. Um, I've done one other set before, did not video, and I figure, heck, it wasn't that big of a deal. Let me video it and uh, it may help you guys out on this. So I, I don't sell these lights. You'd have to contact him. And uh, I looked him up online as Crocker's Creations. And I last time I talked to him, real nice guy. He lives about an hour from me. And I went down there and picked him up in person. But uh, anyway, kind of show you some of the things. I'm going to turn this camera. All right. So obviously, first thing I did was cut my toe switch off, cut all my electrical stuff off, took all four wheels off. So these are the rim lights. And so... They're called chasing lights, so they should go around. And by the time I finish, and I'll wait till it gets dark tonight, and we will uh, do a little video. But it's going to fit around this spindle, and I'm going to secure it on the spindle with hose clamps. It looks pretty simple. Tricky part's going to be running these wires so they don't get snagged, and I'll, I'll make sure I do a good job on that. And then once you fit the rim over there, it does a really neat job. Like I said, I installed them on the Easy Go. Had a little different front end. This one is a adjustable A-arm suspension on a club car precedent. The other one I did on Easy Go had a drop straight axle, but uh, I'm pretty sure we can make it work. So right now I've got everything just kind of plugged up. On this particular Eco battery install, the customer did want a fuse panel, which is gonna make it easy for me. So I'm going to add a fuse and I'm gonna power this thing up. It comes with a remote. And initially, just make sure they all work before I do any further. So you can see I got jack stands on all four wheels, but uh, let's do that. All right, so the first thing I did was on the harness, opened up, it has its own fuse, and it is a five amp. So I went and got myself a bigger blade fuse that will fit in this fuse block, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the five amp in here. So I'm gonna have both fuses. It's not gonna hurt to have two fuses. And I'm gonna wire this up and see if we can get it right. All right, so I found me a uh, place to put it. And I'm probably gonna end up redoing that. But right now, my lights are chasing. That's a good sign, isn't it? So make sure they're all in the proper place. So this is gonna mount right here over the axle. So it is chasing forward. Same thing with this one. It's gonna mount this way. So it is chasing forward. I know this thing's redundant, but if you don't do it and it's chasing backwards, you're gonna have trouble. So that one is chasing forward. And that one is chasing forward. Um, the other set that I did, there is a way to reverse it. So if you wanna, if you do install them backwards, you can always chase it the other way. So pretty cool stuff. So it does have a remote control. We'll definitely have to do a video here at night. Let's see what other things it does. Mode. So see how it reversed backwards that time? Now it's going forward. And that was a preset one, which is not on anything. So pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. So anyway, let's get some different uh, colors on there. Oh, look at that. Now that's the right color green for this green card. It's gonna look awesome at night. All right, let me get one mounted up and we'll show you what we have. All right, guys, we got the first one on there. As you can see, it's centered, it looks pretty good. So these brackets bolt onto the axle housing. It has to go behind the spacer block for a lift kit. If you don't have a lift kit, you still need to mount it that far back because it needs to be in line with the drum. Um, these wheels have different offsets, each different brand. These are mods brands, but even as much as they go in, if it's any closer than in line with that drum, it's gonna interfere with the wheel. So I've got that done. Now the kit came with two sets of uh, hose clamps, which holds it on there, but the rear one, which I assume was the larger hose clamp, was too big. So I'm gonna have to go get some more hose clamps. So what I did was I took the front one, and it has a size on here. It says one and five sixteenths to two and a quarter, and it is just big enough. I'm gonna assume that axle housing is probably somewhere close to two inches, but by the time you add the spacer for the aluminum bracket, you need at least a two and a quarter. So um, I'm going to measure my front spindle right here, and I'm gonna go get me some two new hose clamps up at the parts store before I can finish the front. But the rear 
I'm satisfied. Um, of course, once I get the, all the wheels mounted, excuse me, all the rings mounted, then I'm gonna have to feed this wire Will will not interfere with the leaf spring. I'm sure I'm gonna attach it up here to this pl plastic housing and uh, then run it to my battery box, which I've got awesome room, thanks to Eco Battery. Doesn't take up a lot of space. And we're gonna mount up the controller, which is this little water wires. And this is a master kill switch. So that cuts them on and off. But that's a master kill switch. I'm just gonna leave that mounted up here next to the fuse. All right, a little trip to O'Reilly's. And I think I need an inch and a half. So three quarter to one and three quarter, that should be fine. Won't have any excessive hanging over. So I took this little tool and I measured it. Then I took my tape measure and I measured it. It looks like an inch and a half or maybe just a little under an inch and a half. But this, I think, since some have metric terms or something. But anyway, that worked. Let's get a front ring on. It bolted up perfectly. So I kind of slid it in where the uh, ring is just slightly in from the, uh, the uh, seat of where the rim's going to go. And the reason I did that, because that's about where it is on the rear. So turned out real nice. It looks pretty sturdy. Now these front rings, they only have three metal brackets. So I just put them on top. I left the bottom one blank. So right here. So I've got it tightened on there on the uh, spindle kind of loosely. And so now hopefully with one hand, I can shift this on here. It's a whole lot better with two hands guys. I promise you that, but that's my low production video skills. So once we slide the ring on the uh, hose clamp on there, and this will be impossible. Let me do it with two hands. I got two of them on there, but I don't have the third one. And once I get the third one underneath there, I'm going to slide it back, center it with the other side, and then tighten it up. All right, I did get it on there. I got all three of my uh, tabs in there. So I'm gonna tighten this up. Got that snug. I'm gonna look at it from this side and there you go, can barely move it. That looks pretty good to me. And I think I'm in about the same position with where the uh, wheel is gonna mate up. So now the next thing to do is start hiding this wire. Keep it where it won't get snagged. All right guys, got the uh, passenger front side ran and I drilled some holes right in the top of these little panels to just give myself a, a place to put the zip tie. Came through here, through one of these, this is uh, right underneath your floorboard. Brought the wires up through that extra hole, zip tied them to the brake cable, and I'm coming up, and if you look at it, there's nothing hanging down at all. So, zero chance of it snagging something. And what I cut those holes in with there might be a better way, but this little step up bit works pretty good because it's pretty sharp. And I just drilled myself a little hole for that zip tie to zing on to. So now, now it's time to go inside. Right, I start on a project, I get a big old bag. That's an 800 count I got from Lowe's, but uh, zip ties. And I'll sweep all this stuff up, obviously. But you can see I got zip tie little tails everywhere. So as the wires came up on the inside of the battery box, once I get them snugged and I feel comfortable, I'm probably gonna put a zip tie around all four of them. Then I'm gonna do some wire management. Very similar, if I pull this out of the way, you can see how I did the eco battery install. So anyway, hey, if you're looking for an eco battery, I'm your guy. So anyway, let me finish doing this and then I'm gonna make a very neat install to his fuse block. All right, guys, I got it done. So it's the middle of the day. You can see the rings through there. A little better on the front because of the uh, shadow, but turned out awesome. I know my customer's gonna be happy, my eco customer. So as I get everything, let me go to the other side. And while we're around the rear of it, you can kind of see the uh, aluminum brackets that are mounted to the axle tubes, but they're not going anywhere. Everything's in place. Getting ready to test drive it. Make sure nothing's rubbing. But now, underneath this eco battery compartment, you see how much room it frees up. Not to mention it's 270 pounds lighter. So I've got my little controller there. My customer will be able to scan it with his phone and actually have an app along with his uh, remote 
but everything is tucked away. I did install the kill switch right here. So it's up top. I just zip tied it on there. Pretty simple. Get that tucked away. So there she is. So um, anyway, I wish it was dark outside where we could show you guys what it looks like at night. Nah, you know I'm kidding. This is YouTube. So in about five seconds, it's gonna be dark on your end and we'll show you what this thing looks like at night. All right, guys, take a quick little test drive before it gets dark tonight in my customer's cart. And uh, this is one previously, if you've watched my videos, we did the Eco Battery and also did the Plum Quick Motor, the Plum Quick Bandit. So with that combination, you do not need to change your cables or your solenoid. It works fine with the factory controller and factory solenoid, and it performs very well. So uh, unfortunately, since I'm doing this with a iPhone, I can't uh, show you the speed as we're coming along. As you can see, we're moving along pretty good right now. So we're doing about 26, 27, and this is a 2009 Club Car President with the Eco 105 and also the Plum Quick motor. So I got my wheel lights flashing. So like I said, I can't wait till tonight to show you. Like I said, good thing is this is YouTube and I promise you it's coming up. Just stay tuned. So I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, there's my finished product. As you can tell, it reflects on the ground awesomely. Really turned out pretty cool. So with the remote, we can play it around with some different colors and stuff, different types of flashing. And it lights up underneath the cart. Great. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Like I said, I don't sell these. I don't endorse these. I just installed them and it turned out awesome. So um, wouldn't hesitate again, put, put a set on my own personal cart. So click and subscribe, follow me for more little uh, how-to tips. Thanks.